Um, our next presentation is brought to us by uh, Daniela Freitas Gomez and Karen Dennison, both records linkage managers uh, at the uh, Center for Longitudinal Studies at the University College of London. And they worked on this with uh, Nasir uh, Raja, who is a research fellow at the Center for Longitudinal Studies, uh, also at UCL. Uh, the floor is yours, Daniela, Karen. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so this is a joint presentation by myself and my colleague Danielle. And we're both record linkage managers at the Centre for Longitudinal Studies at University College London. We liaise with data controllers such as the National Health Service and government departments to link in administrative records to our study data. And there's a separate team of researchers at our centre and our colleague Nazia um, is joining us for the panel discussion. So this presentation will give a brief overview of the studies that we run, our record linkage work, how the data are protected, the linked health data and the importance of the data. So we run four national longitudinal studies that follow the lives of tens of thousands of people across the UK, born in 1958, 1970, 1989 and 2000. And each study includes large nationally representative groups of people, mostly followed since birth, through childhood and adolescence and into their adult lives. And they're all broad multidisciplinary studies and powerful research tools. Each study interviews study members at key life stages and we continue to follow up our cohort members throughout their lives. And during the pandemic, we've also been running a series of COVID web surveys with all of our cohorts. So typical information collected includes things like household composition and social class, employment, health, including chronic health problems and housing. And for studies with birth data, there's also data on pregnancy and labor. And during the school years, we've also conducted cognitive tests and collected data on emotions and behavior, health and school attainment. Um, for three of our studies, we've collected biosamples such as blood and saliva. And these studies have been or are in the process of being genotyped. And also in March this year, study participants who took part in our COVID web surveys were asked to provide a blood sample to be analysed for COVID-19 antibodies. So the centre has a data linkage programme um, to link a range of data to, this, to our survey data, including not only health, but also education, economic and crime records. And the way the linkages are conducted ensures the confidentiality of the survey responses. So we generate a bespoke identifier for each cohort member that has consented to the linkage. And we send this with their name, address, date of birth, and so on to the data controller. The data controller then matches their administrative records to the data and removes the names and addresses, returning just the spoke ID and the linked records to the center. Um, and within the center, the team with access to identifiable data, so the names and addresses and so on of our cohort members, they don't have any access to the research data. And the team with access to the research data, likewise, they don't have any access to the identifiable data. And so once the data is returned, um, the research data team cleans the data and carries out disclosure control before depositing the data with the UK data service for access to researchers via its um, secure lab. So um, within UCL, we store the data on the UCL data safe haven. Um, and this is accredited to international information security management standards. Um, anyone using the safe haven has to undergo training and access is limited to those who need it and to specific data that they need access to. Access is via remote desktop and requires multi-factor authentication. So I'll now hand over to my colleague, Danielle. Uh, for the rest of the presentation. 
Daniela, I'm afraid I can't we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, perfect. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Trying to find the buttons when my presentation open up, everything was hidden. <laughs> okay, so. So I'm Danielle, and I'm going to talk about the health data that we have available now. Uh, I will also provide some recommendations on the negotiations of this data based on our experience and um, how we keep participants safe. So we have now linked health data from Scotland, Wales, and England to our studies. The data available covers hospitalizations in general. This will consist of uh, inpatient, outpatient, accident and emergency data. For Scotland, we have some additional data such as maternity records, child health and immunization. So uh, for more information about what is in the data, how you can access it, uh, please go to the UKDS website, type the name of the study and you will see a list of all the, the data available for each study. So negotiations with photo would be useful to just share a little bit of our experiences and recommendations uh, having gone through the process of applying for health data which is quite difficult to to get approval so it's a lengthy process uh, it has taken us several years so if you would like to apply um, i don't know how it is in other countries and certainly in england it has taken a long time and if you'd like to apply and you have a tight deadline i would um, recommend you apply as soon as possible um, liaise with your legal team during the time where you're accessing and going through the application process. It is likely if you are going to apply for onward sharing approval, meaning you'd like to share data with others, it's likely that you have to comply with some special conditions. You may be asked to create legal documents and things like that. It would be really useful to bring the legal team on board uh, very early on in the process. Uh, establish the legal basis for processing. We would avoid using the GDPR consent as a legal basis. So if you collect consent for your studies, you may want to uh, uh, um, avoid using the GDPR. This is mainly because the GDPR sets high standard for consent and can restrict what you can do. So for our center, we use public task as a legal basis, but we do use consent uh, for ethical reasons and to comply with the common law duty of confidentiality. So NHS will ask us how we comply with that duty. We'll do that by using consent by consenting participants and then only sending data for linkage for those who have consented. Um, how are participants protected? Uh, so the linkage is conducted only for those who consented. So before we send the linked data, the, the data file for matching, we will um, remove any any participant who has withdrawn consent to data linkage or to the study participation before we send. We'll keep participants informed of what we're doing with their data, of the linkage program we have in our website or the communications we have with them. Uh, CLS will have a separation system, which my colleague has already mentioned, uh, will never receive the, the linked data um, if by the data would not not be received by the team who sends the identifiable data it will always be separate all data is made available using a pseudonymized uh, id researchers are who are willing to access this data will need to apply they will need to um, explain the intended analysis um, detail the data they need uh, they will need to complete all the mandatory training before they can access the data there will be uh, an approval by the UKDS and CLS, and only then researchers can access the data. The access will be via this UKDS Secure Lab. Um, and we also require that the researcher accessing the data was also the organization agree to the confidentiality terms and sign the agreement. And a disclosure control is conducted before a researcher can publish their papers. So the importance of making this data available. So it's 
very important to make this data available, especially in the way we do, where we deposited at the UK the data service and researchers can come in and apply because it's costly. It's very costly, especially in England, and for each researcher to apply individually and by depositing it with the UKDS, it's free at the point of use. If you are considering uh, accessing this data and making it available um, for the research community, you could also consider a maybe a um, cost recovery model or something like that. So combined with the survey data, this linked data has great potential to contribute to scientific research and a result, as a result, improve the lives of people with health conditions. So the linked data provides rich information about the individual's health and usage of NHS services, which is not yet available in all cohort studies. So for example, we are able to see how often an individual presents to a &E, uh, to an emergency and um, accident and emergency services. We could then use the rich information available from birth in most studies to predict attendance uh, to the a &E. um, The linked data, uh, if the linked data is a population representative, we will be able to leverage the rich nature of the birth cohort study for various pieces of research. For example, if we find that, that uh, rates of cancer in the linked population data are similar to the population in England, we may be in a position to use variables from birth to predict cancer and machine learning. Uh, linked data are likely to be less biased than survey data alone as they are independent of the individual. So for example, a cohort may choose not to respond to a question about their health, uh, which may mask our understanding of their health, yet the HES data can provide a picture of this individual's health subject to consent and linkage uh, and is associated bias, biases. So linked HES data can be used to predict the non-response in the cohort studies, which is what we are currently doing in CLS. My colleague Nazir, who is in the panel today, he's working on this. And um, as the collection of HES data is independent, uh, of response to these studies, we can begin to understand what factors may be more likely to lead to non-response in survey. So this uh, last slide was a, comp a contribution from my colleague Nazir. If you have any questions, he will be in the panel and he'll be able to answer any questions you may have. And um, thank you very much for listening. Yes, thank you very much to Karen and Danielle for those insights really interesting and and um, I, I like the fact that you highlighted all the, the sensitive data as well.